Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain Television. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, marking his country's national day. His Majesty wished the Saudi monarch good health and happiness and the people of Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, marking his country's national day. His Royal Highness wished the Saudi monarch good health and happiness and the people of Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also sent similar cables to the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Naif bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and the Deputy Crown Prince, Second Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, marking his country's national day. His Royal Highness wished the Saudi monarch good health and happiness and the people of Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince sent similar cables to the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Naif bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and to the Deputy Crown Prince, Second Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is celebrating its 86th National Day today, the 23rd of September. Festivities have run high in many GCC countries celebrating the fraternal relationships with Saudi Arabia. More details in this report with Sarah Lebrek. Saudi Arabia celebrates on its 86th National Day with a strategic vision to take the kingdom to new heights of progress and prosperity on all fronts. Under the wise leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Minister of Interior, Prince Mohammed bin Naif bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and Deputy Crown Prince, Second Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. On the 17th of Jamad al Ula, 1351, a royal decree was issued to declare the unification of all parts of the modern kingdom under the name of Saudi Arabia. King Abdulaziz chose September 23, 1932 as the day to the proclamation of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. First of all, I would like to uh, extend uh, my deepest congratulations to the um, uh, custodian of the two holy mosques and the, uh, uh, his uh, crown prince uh, Prince Mohammed bin Naif and his deputy crown prince, Prince uh, Mohammed uh, bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz. This uh, day is a uh, reflection uh, of the, 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 the development of, um, uh, of Saudi Arabia. Uh, it is a time to uh, remind us of the uh, the legacy of the foundation of Saudi Arabia. A national day is always important for the people of a country, and Saudis also celebrated their national day with pride. This year it came right after an important religious duty, the Hajj, emphasizing the kingdom's service to the Islamic religion with all the expansions and improvements done to the holy sites. We, uh, as, a, a, uh, as a nation, uh, feel uh, the strength of the loyalty uh, and strength of the uh, of the love uh, of the country. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are experiencing now the, the 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 security and the stability and the prosperity uh, as we go along. This is Sarah Break for Bahrain 55. Saudi Arabia today celebrates its 86th National Day anniversary commemorating the unification of the kingdom at the hands of His Majesty King Abdulaziz bin Abdurrahman Al Saud. The National Day anniversary comes to emphasize the firmness of rules and principles on which the kingdom's great achievements are based. It comes also as the culmination of the process of growth, development and construction since the era of the founder king to the era of well-being the prosperous development that we are witnessing today under the great leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, His Majesty King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Mohammed bin Naif bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and His Royal Highness 
the Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, where the kingdom stands proudly side by side with the developed countries in every field. Thanks to Allah, the kingdom enjoys a blessed renaissance with more security and stability, in spite of the security, economic and political challenges in the region. King Salman has always worked to maintain the safety and prosperity of the kingdom, which enjoys while de deeply upholding the nation's Islamic and Arab orientation. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, who succeeded his brother, the late King Abdullah, upon his death in January 2015, is a stalwart among world statesmen whose contribution to the Saudi Kingdom, to the peace and security of the Middle East region and to the world at large have no parallels. Saudi Arabia under King Salman is striving to ensure peace and security in the region. The king has left no stone unturned to reinstate a legitimate government in Yemen, to ensure peace in Syria, support the Palestinian cause and to fight the menace of terrorism on regional and global level. He has been intimately engaged in the affairs of the Arab countries and helping all needy segments of Saudi society and the nations across the world. A number of international officials and representatives of the global relief and humanitarian offices and organizations have lauded Saudi Arabia's role under the leadership of King Salman in providing relief and humanitarian efforts through King Salman Center for Relief and Humanitarian Aid. The custodian of the two holy mosques has spared no effort since assuming the kingdom's power in moving the march of the country forward, where his activities have multiplied in various fields, both at the domestic and external levels. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which celebrates its National Day today, spared no effort in serving millions of pilgrims year-round under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, spending billions of dollars to enhance services for pilgrims and ensure that they perform their religious duties in security, comfort and ease. For the duration of Hajj and the traditional visit to the Prophet city of al Madina and Munawwara afterward, the Saudi government is always keen to ensure that the pilgrims are provided with high-quality health services, ground transportation, public safety and security. The impressive efforts and services made by Saudi Arabia are not limited to facilitating Hajj ways for pilgrims, but they extend to the expansion of the two holy mosques and the development of holy sites. Each year, Saudi authorities take all measures to ensure the security and welfare of pilgrims during Hajj and made other arrangements to facilitate them in every possible manner. Each year, the kingdom hosts more than 2 million Muslims during Hajj, as well as several million Muslims who visit the holy mosques in Mecca and Medina to perform Umrah throughout the year. And for the Saudi government and its people, it is an honor to serve pilgrims from all over the world. His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Award for Sustainable Development aims to encourage the international community to shoulder its responsibilities in achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. This year's recipient is Professor Anna Kajimolo from Tanzania. She is being awarded for providing creative solutions in attaining these goals. Hamad Shaban has the details in this report. His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Award for Sustainable Development will be presented during a grand ceremony organized by the Kingdom of Bahrain at the UN in New York this evening. The award is consistent with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's vision to achieve sustainable development in line with the Sustainable Development Goals 2030 adopted by world leaders during September of 2015 at the UN Sustainable Development Summit. The award aims at achieving international cooperation through the exchange and transfer of experiences and lessons learned. By launching the award, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister aims to encourage the international community to shoulder its responsibilities towards achieving sustainable development, especially within developing nations. This year's recipient is Professor Anna Kajamolo Tebai Joka, an MP from the United Republic of Tanzania and former Minister of Lands, Housing and Human Settlements Development. She is being bestowed with the award in recognition of her achievements and success in providing creative solutions for the attainment of sustainable development. His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Award for Sustainable Development was first announced in Geneva in July of 2007 during a ceremony in which His Royal Highness the Prime Minister received the prestigious 2006 Special Citation for the Habitat Scroll of Honor Award from the UN Human Settlements Program. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister has endorsed Bahrain's commitment to the UN's agenda, which is now well entrenched in the national essence and is reflected strongly in its activities over the years. 
His Royal Highness, through his wise policies and directives, managed to spearhead the kingdom into the successful implementation of the Millennium Development Goals through the provision of education and promoting gender equality and the empowerment of women, along with reducing child mortality rates and improving overall health standards. And so the kingdom continues to prove itself to be a leading pioneer in achieving the goals of sustainable development while recognizing and providing the incentives for other nations to do so as well. Mohamed Shaban, Bahrain Television News. On the sideline of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, took part in the annual ministerial meeting of the Asia Cooperation Dialogue member states held in New York, where he exchanged views on the future of the ACD and the means to achieve its goals. The meeting discussed ongoing preparations for the second ACD summit, which will be held in the Kingdom of Thailand on October the 9th and 10th as well as the documents that will be ratified during the summit, in addition to the 2030 vision of the ACD member states. The United Arab Emirates during the meeting received the chairmanship of the upcoming session of the ACD from the Kingdom of Thailand. Bahrain is a founding member of the ACD since 2002 and is a co-prime mover in the following fields of cooperation, science, technology, innovation, education, human resource development, sustainable development, connectivity, food, water and energy security. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Khaled bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, has conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to his brother, the President Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi of the Brotherly Republic of Yemen, as the latter received him on the sideline of the meetings of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly in New York. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed Bahrain's commitment to continue its participation in the Arab coalition to support the legitimacy in Yemen until the legitimate government led by President Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi is able to extend state control on all the Yemeni territories, manage its affairs and carry out its mission to achieve development and prosperity for the brotherly people of Yemen. The minister stressed that the Arab coalition's humanitarian role would continue so as to ease the sufferings of the Yemeni people and all foreign interferences help implement the Gulf Initiative and its executive mechanisms and enforce the outputs of the National Dialogue and the UN Security Council Resolution 2216 of 2015, which will also ensure a political solution to the crisis, put an end to the sufferings of the Yemenis and preserve the country's security and stability and unity as well. For his part, Yemen's president entrusted the Minister of Foreign Affairs with conveying his greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and expressed sincere pride and appreciation on behalf of all the Yemeni people to the Kingdom of Bahrain for its support for the Yemeni cause, affirming that it is not strange for the Kingdom to demonstrate such supportive stances and wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the President of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly, Peter Thompson, on the sideline of the meetings of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly. The Minister extended his sincere congratulations to Mr. Peter Thompson for the trust placed in his person by the international community and his assignment to the post of President of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly. He renewed the commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain to providing Mr. Thompson with all forms of support and cooperation to contribute to success of his mission and in reinforcing interstate bonds and peace and security. Mr. Thompson voiced for his part the recognition for the stances and contributions of the Kingdom of Bahrain in maintaining stability in the region and for its cooperation with the UN in enhancing peace and security. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Foreign Minister of New Zealand, Mr. Murray McKelly, the Foreign Minister of Tanzania, Mr. Augustine Mahaiga, and the Deputy Foreign Minister of the Republic of Estonia, Fino Renard. This came on the sideline of the UN General Assembly meetings in New York. During his meetings with them, Sheikh Khalid reviewed the kingdom's bilateral relations with their countries and the means of bolstering them in the various fields. He affirmed on the importance of meetings and exchanging visits among officials in order to further explore joint cooperation as well as coordination on issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met his Costa Rican counterpart, Manuel Gonzalez Sanz. The two sides commended relations binding the two brotherly countries, affirming keenness to do all they could to bolster joint ties in all fields to attain common interests and increase the level of bilateral coordination at the international gatherings.
and the Minister of Foreign Affairs met members of the American Jewish Community Committee on the sideline of the meetings of the 71st session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. During the meeting, they reviewed the historical ties linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States in all domains and ways of reinforcing them in all fields to strengthen the interests of the two friendly countries and people, as well as they touched on the most important regional and global issues of mutual concern. The annual Heart Health Campaign Feel the Beat is back in Bahrain with the aim of improving the public health and awareness of cardiac issues. Daniel Deporto brings us this report. Feel the Beat is an annual campaign carried out at city centre malls across the region in partnership with local healthcare providers designed to improve communities by providing health checks and wellness education relating to cardiac issues. From 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. this weekend, staff from the Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Cardiac Centre are providing these services free of charge to the general public. We expect anybody from whichever nationality they might be to come for a checkup for their cholesterol, their blood pressure, body mass index and education. We can give them some illustrations on what is the heart, how the heart works, as well as um, help them to follow a healthier lifestyle and prevent heart disease. And the campaign for heart health will not end after this weekend. Next week we will have for Cardiac Centre its own event where we will focus also on heart health, but specifically for cardiac patients. We target everybody because we also need to prevent, we not only cure, and therefore we will have kind of a CPR where we will just teach people a little bit about heart saver and what to do if somebody would collapse. We will also have dietitians, we will have pharmacists, we will have physiotherapists, and of course we will have diagnostic department which will tell us about what procedures they do once you've been identified with a heart disease. Improving awareness and prevention of cardiac issues is an increasingly important issue as cardiac disease is a leading cause of illness and death in the developed world. The risk for cardiac disease are increasing worldwide. Um, not only that the people ignore it, but they need to have early uh, awareness of what to do to prevent the, the heart disease. Because risk factors can be, some of them are modifiable, some of them are not, and wherever we can help and improve lives of others, that's what we try to do. This year, to add an element of creative fun, a professional DJ will be present from 5pm onwards to record people's heartbeats with digital stethoscopes and mix them into a personalised song. Campaigns such as this offer the public a convenient and mostly painless way to check on their health and to inform the general public about the importance of such issues. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.